Now, one of the most important components to an efficient golf swing is the ability to rotate through the golf ball. This not only encourages to stabilize the club face, giving you better start line and curvature control, but also assists in creating more speed. If you feel like you're struggling with this area, stay tuned, this video is really gonna help. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here at the Joondalup Resort. Before we get stuck in, as always, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell so you get notified of all the great content coming your way. Alrighty, in today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about the importance of rotation coming into the golf ball and how you at home can improve your ability to do so. And I'm gonna give you a great exercise understanding concept and feel of how to achieve that so first of all what is rotation well as simple as possible today we're going to just be talking purely about the amount of body rotation at the moment of impact now why would this be important well golf is an athletic motion and therefore to create the most amount of speed power and efficiency we need to allow our body to rotate towards our target if you freeze frame the average recreational golfer at the moment of impact, you'll tend to see the body stalled out, stop, their body will be facing the ball at impact. This causes a chain reaction where the arms are being bunching up. Now, aside from grip and club face orientation, which can cause your body to stall out in an attempt to square the face, assuming those are in order, what we're gonna be looking at today is purely on just how to encourage your body to rotate. If you're struggling with contact issues and you're struggling with start line and curvature, well then this could be the key that you're looking for to improve the quality of your ball striking. So let's show you a reference relative to what we would see with the average recreational golfer at a little bit of a faster speed. They would make their backswing and as they come in, their body would tend to stall out, jump up, get quite close and you can see I've run out of room, my arms have bunched up. Now the professional would be quite different. They would then move into the golf ball, their hips would clear, their shoulders slightly behind, their arms lengthening and long, and then they would finish to a tall, complete position post impact. So that's obviously what we're looking for, not this square straight on, bunched up look that you see too many golfers find themselves in. So first of all, let's talk about some education to give you a better understanding of exactly how much we need to rotate. So what I've got here is this alignment stick, and we're just going to place this across our shoulders here. And we've got a white stick down on the ground as a bit of a reference for, let's say, just 90 degrees or square. So if I get to the top of my backswing here, assuming you've made a complete turn, and then I start making my move down towards the golf ball, as I start down, my hips are going to shift forward and begin to rotate. As I get to the moment of impact, we want to see these shoulders about 10 degrees open. So if we've got this yellow stick down on the ground, we wouldn't match these up. It would be actually slightly open to that point. Not only that, we can see that we've got a bit of tilt to our shoulders. That's a video for another time today, just looking purely at the rotation. So the shoulders at the moment of impact need to be about 10 degrees open when we strike the golf ball. Alrighty, let's talk about the hips. So if I swing to the top, same reference line, swing to the top, stop, start to swing down. As my arms and everything moves into impact, we want to get these hips a little bit more open than the shoulders. We're looking for about 30 degrees of rotation for maximum efficiency and power as we come in and strike the golf ball. So when you're working on encouraging this feeling, well, you can do a simple little exercise like this. You can place a stick between your hips. We're going to make a little backswing. And then all we're going to do is we're going to get the feeling that this yellow stick through my belt buckles is moving to a point that when my club would reach impact, we're on this angle here. So we can see that we've begun to rotate. Now, we don't want our shoulders matching those hips because then you can see that my body would begin to lunge forward, which is obviously not a good result. But we do want the feeling that the hips are coming in, rotating, and our shoulders are slightly behind. That's going to assist in getting some shaft lean and then come out from there. Now, after you've done a couple of swings with this stick, we're going to give you one of the best feelings you can get for trying to increase rotation. And that is just simply a reference of what your trail hip and your trail shoulder are doing. So for the right hander, that would be your right hip and your right shoulder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up good ball position and effectively from the top of the swing, you are going to imagine your right hip is in a race with your right shoulder and your objective is to try and get your right hip to the ball 
before your right shoulder does. Now, when you do that, this is gonna encourage a couple of things. Number one, overall rotation, first of all, but secondary, it's gonna help get those hips rotating a little bit more than the shoulders to encourage that better contact through the golf ball so our head's not lunging as far forward. Now, when you do this, it's very important you start off slow and you do some quite intentional, considered practice swings. You set up, you swing halfway back, right hip in a race with the right shoulder, brush the ground, and again, Swing to the top, right hip in a race with the right shoulder, brush the ground. You can see I've got a ball teed up just in front and we're gonna hit that in a second. But when you do your practice swings, you wanna make sure that you're trying to brush the ground pretty much right where you would want to in regards to where the ball would be lying. So when you do this, it really gives you that good feel of getting those hips moving how we would like. The opposite, obviously when we come back to square, if our hips weren't rotating as much, I've got no room, so my arms bunch up and that causes those contact issues. So let's see it in action. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set up to this golf ball. We're gonna make some slow rehearsals. We're gonna swing and stop. From here, the right hips in a race with the right shoulder. I'm feeling this nice amount of rotation back to the ball. Really getting that sensation. It's gonna encourage a bit of what we call a crunch or a bit of side bend with the right side. And then after we've done that, we've got those hips firing, the shoulders are coming behind. Let's go ahead and let's just clip one down there lightly. Now, when I did that, I felt that my body had a lot of freedom. I felt like there was a lot of room for my arms to swing the energy of the golf swing out towards the target. And the strike was really easy. It's gonna help keep that club face a lot squarer and encourage more of a consistent delivery from shot to shot. So if you're struggling with your ball striking, you film yourself and it looks like you're not rotating quite enough, well, this could be the ticket that you're looking for. Let's get that stick through the hips. Let's get a feeling of more lower body rotation. The more you do this exercise, the better. And then once you've done that, go ahead, go down to the range and get that sensation of that trail hip working earlier towards the golf ball than the trail shoulder. Work on brushing the ground, do a couple of practice swings and then go ahead and hit the ball. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As always, if you haven't already, please go down, click subscribe, click that little bell. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.